Hey guys, even here, and we are three days out of Mr. Olympia, yeah, that's right, only a couple of days are left, and as the D-Day is approaching, these bodybuilders are posting a lot of stuff, a lot of content, a lot of physique updates, training videos, and so there are days like today when I have to make more than one video, so Chris Bumstead, I would like to start with this one, I hope you guys don't mind, Chris Bumstead posted this video of him training with Honey Rambot, and in this video, you can see how good he's looking. Even though it's a video and he's posing a little bit in this video, but still you can see, look at the hardness, man. Look at the triceps, look at the lats. Just look at this hardness, this, this quality, this kind of uh, clean look to the skin that almost all clients of Honey Rambert have. So Honey traveled to Florida to Chris Bumstead and he's there with him. They're training together, obviously. And Honey's trying to dial him in for the show. Look at this front lat spread. How insane. How ridiculous is this? Look at this madness. Look at the V taper. Look at the lats. What a crazy physique, man. Let's check it out once again. The best thing about Chris Bumstead, or the worst for his competition, is the fact that he keeps changing until the day of the show. Like, he looks amazing at, like, six weeks out. But then, at five weeks out, he looks much better. Two weeks out, he looks ridiculous. One week out, he looks better. And every single day, as the show is approaching, he is better and better by the day. Unlike some guys, for example, Urs since he was already shredded and he looked amazing at, like, six or eight weeks out. And at that point, he looked better than Chris. And it looked like he was gonna probably challenge him. But at this point, it's not even funny. Like, the difference is so big right now. It's not even it's not at all a question of how is Chris gonna do in this lineup how much is he going to destroy everybody it's just gonna be about how impressive his physique is gonna look like on that stage and it's going to be a historic moment for for classic physique for bodybuilding I'm pretty sure because now with help of the best coach in the world right now arguably he's going to bring something insane Back to what I said about him changing every day, uh, yeah, he has a new coach now, and his previous coach was, of course, his brother-in-law, Ian Valier. but from what I heard from other people who were coached by Honey Rambert, Honey is very good with communicating, that's his thing, communication, so I'm sure Chris already spoke to him about his approach, his previous approach with Ian, that obviously worked, and so I'm guessing Honey went with similar approach in terms of picking Chris at the very end of the prep, as you can notice, like every single day he was getting better and better, and there is still a couple of more days for Chris to improve and get even better, and as I said, I think Honey basically did a similar approach that Chris was doing with, uh, with uh, Ian before, but I'm sure he tweaked some things, he gave his personal touch, he probably gave him away some secrets, some secret ingredients that only Honey Rambert knows about, and whatever these guys did, it just went so well so far, like as you can see, Chris is looking incredible right now, and it looks like we're gonna see the best Chris Bumstead of all time, and that's gonna be freaking ridiculous, I can't wait to see that on stage. Next, we have Brandon Curry with a, well, let's call it a physique update, it's not really it, but... You know, he was really secretive during this prep, he hasn't been showing anything, we don't know what to expect, but in some of the photos that he posted, we can kind of get the idea what he's going for, and based on what his coach Abdullah had to say as well. I feel like they are going for muscle, for mass, for size, and that's what it looks like, at least in this photo. So as you can see, he looks really round, really big and full. I mean, those freaking delts and those arms and that chest. And I can even see some bubble gut there. That's, that's new. That's not something Brandon always had. So I'm guessing that's from eating a lot of food. And I'm guessing that's why he got so big. And he said that he was, I think, 10, 15 pounds heavier this year than last year. I just honestly hope that all that muscle went to his legs. And Steve Weinberger, in my previous video, if you guys haven't seen it, already said that if Brandon brings up his legs, he has a legit chance of reclaiming his Mr. Olympia title. But this is like a double-edged sword. Maybe he is going to be too smooth. And he never really brought crazy conditioning on stage. And if he's going to try to play size game against Big Ramy, he's going to lose it. Like, even if he's... 260 as he said he's gonna be big Ramy is like 300 so he's not gonna beat him in size game the only game that he can beat him at is conditioning game 
But as I said, this is a double-edged sword. Why? Because Steve Weinberger basically said that the reason why he didn't win last year was because his legs were down in size. And if his legs were a little bit bigger, then he probably would have beaten Big Ramy last year. If he went for conditioning instead of size, which is something he tried in 2021, he loses a lot of that leg fullness. When he loses fullness, he doesn't lose it from his upper body. His upper body is insane, so he will never uh, look flat in upper body, but his legs are his weak point. And when he gets flat, when he gets super conditioned, when he loses a little bit of that fullness, his legs disappear. And is it even worth it? I mean, yeah, he's a little bit more conditioned, but he's not crazy conditioned. There are gonna be guys who are much more conditioned than him, like, for example, Hari Chupan, like Nick Walker and some others. And he is not beating all of these guys because of his conditioning, but because of his shape. He has a ridiculous shape. So back to the original photo, if what I'm saying is true, if he's actually going with fullness and size, I think that's a smart call, I think that's a good decision, even though he's not gonna be bigger than Big Ramy, I think his physique is going to look the best if he is big and full. And right now in this photo, he does look pretty damn big. Whatever you guys think about Brandon Curry and where he's gonna place this year, and does he really have a chance against Big Ramy? Tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, now let's move on to this aesthetic freak right here. And I'm saying aesthetic freak is because it's Keon, it's Keon Pearson who is uh, a 212 guy. He's a bodybuilder, he's not a classic physique guy anymore. But he has incredible shape, incredible structure. Arguably the best structure in the world right now across all the categories, including Chris Bumstead or whoever. Like, this guy has such a ridiculous structure. Yeah, he's short, but he is doing 212. And he is going to... I think he's going to do really well this year. I think he's going to uh, jump a lot of places. I think, based on the way he looks right now, I feel like he has a chance of being in that top three at the Mr. Olympia. There are a couple of guys that he probably can't beat, like Sean Clarida and probably Kamal El Gargni. He already did beat Carrot Baggio, and there are a couple of other great guys in 212, like Angel Calderon. I don't know if he's going to be doing Open or 212, but I can see Keon beating pretty much everybody, almost everybody. I don't really see him beating Sean Clarida. I think Sean is another level, and I don't know about Kamal. Maybe he can beat Kamal, but you know, top two, top three, potentially, best case scenario, if you ask me. It feels like he's going to bring the best conditioning of his life. He was very, very active on his social media lately, and that should tell you something. That should tell you that he is confident. And based on all the physique updates, we have seen all of them, he looks to be bringing really good conditioning. Look at this. Look at the separation in chest. I don't think he ever had this kind of dryness detail and conditioning. So whatever he's doing with Patrick Tour, it's working. And these guys are clicking so well. And I think we're going to see the best version of Keon Pearson of all time what that version is gonna do in 212 Mr. Olympia, I'm really curious to see, but in my eyes, I think he has a legit chance of being top three, I think right now he is a top three uh, 212 guy in the world, and as far as being second or winning the Mr. Olympia in 212, I don't know, tell me in the comment section guys, tell me what do you think, me personally, I have him as high as second, and as low as, let's say, 6th, I don't see him placing anywhere out of that ballpark. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And we got another very interesting thing, it's Phil Heath right now, posing, and we can see what his physique is looking like right now. But in one of his uh, previous posts that he made maybe like a week ago, he said that in the last year or so he hasn't really been training a lot. He wasn't very consistent with his training, and my guess would be that he's on TRT, that's my assumption, he looks like he's on a little bit of test because he's maintaining a lot of size, he's maintaining a decent size, but he lost all of that hardness that Phil is known for, he lost all that definition, as you can see he is lean, he is not fat or anything like that, he is not watery, why would he be holding water, he's just soft, and that's something that happens when you don't have a lot of androgens in your body. But if he was gonna make a comeback, he could do that very easily because, as you can see, he's still big, he didn't lose any size. He only lost some of that hardness, some of that roundness, 
some of that 3D, but as far as size, as far as muscle, he still has it, basically. Look at the biceps, look at the arms, I mean, look at the size of him. I don't know what he's weighing right now these days, but he doesn't look small, and he doesn't look huge, and he doesn't look hard, so I'm guessing he's off, I mean, on TRT, and does she plan on competing again? I don't even want to entertain that thought. I have no idea. What I do know about Phil Heath is that he's going to be doing the Mr. Olympia commentary. And I can't wait to watch the live stream. I think he's a great commentator. So as for now, that's all we're going to hear or see from Phil Heath. Uh, do I think he's going to compete again? I have no idea. He never officially retired. If he wanted to come back, he has the physique to do it. I just don't know how his hernia uh, is doing now, how his stomach is looking. That's the only thing. But he's not showing it, so I'm guessing it's not that good. So I'm pretty sure if I had to put my money on it, if I had to bet, I would bet that we're not going to see Phil Heath on a bodybuilding stage ever again. But if you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.